are scattered across the Michigan hillside. Berlin Raceway is expecting a packed house tonight for the superstar racing experience. You can see the grandstands looming behind me. A lot of fans are already filled in and we're <laughs> over three hours away from green flag for the main event. This track is located just outside of Grand Rapids. This is my first time visiting Michigan. It's nice to escape the 100 plus degree Texas heat for a few days. I don't really have a plan for this video. I just bought a grandstand ticket. I'm filming this on my phone. Uh, I wanted to go to another SRX race this year. I went to Nashville Fairgrounds last season, had a good time, got the full up close garage pass experience. But you know, on this trip, I'm going to Michigan International Speedway for NASCAR. I wanted to go visit a NASCAR track I hadn't been to before. And it just lined up nicely that Berlin Raceway, you know, it's just a couple hours away. So I figured I'd you know, double up. So we'll kind of just see where this video takes us. What is this? It says swine. Are there pigs in here? This is just like a hundred yards behind the grandstands. I don't know. It looks like all the pens are empty. There's a bunch of benches sitting up here. I, I don't know much about this track. You know, I did some research. I know Berlin Raceway opened in 1950. Some notable drivers who've come through here include Jack Sprague, Johnny Benson, Johnny Benson Jr. who's racing tonight. Carson Hosevar was the 2017 super late model track champion. I just overheard Brad Keselowski, who's racing tonight, say on the speakers that uh, both his dad and his brother have won here, but Brad is still looking for a win. So uh, he's a Michigan native. I'm sure he would love to win tonight. So yeah, I know the basics about this track, but like, I don't understand why there's a, a like a barn sort of here. <laughs> Kind of random, but uh, but pretty cool. Anyway, uh, like I said, I bought a grandstand ticket. Uh, there's, I believe, a limited late model support series going tonight, so uh, that starts before long. Let's go ahead and head into the track. Man, I'm just weaving in and out of cars. I parked further away. I've just kind of been wandering around. The, the parking lot is packed. Like I said, I got here a little later than I wanted to, and uh, I was worried they weren't gonna have any parking spaces. They, they squoze me in, so appreciate the, the track crew for helping out with that. I love these banners they have behind the main grandstands. William Byron, Money in the Bank, 2022 winner. Except there's also a date there, June 7th, 2023. I guess that must have been this year's event. And uh, I thought this was the uh, entrance, but no, this is re-entry only. I gotta figure out how to actually get in. I think you have to go through that white building. Here we go, I think this is the main entrance we have to go in first. Blue wristband acquired, just walked in. First thing you see is the SRX official merchandise hauler. I might have to go take a look. Year three of the SRX, tonight is race number four. After tonight, they head to Eldora. They'll do a little dirt racing next Thursday. Good looking shirts, I love that orange. The orange and black is a neat combo. You guys know I love hats. I might have to get a hat. Okay, place your bets in the comments. Which hat do you think I'm gonna pick? And we'll see if you're right. Okay, did you guess? Have you made your guess? Ah, oh, did you get it right? Did you guess my tastes correctly? I like it, I like it. it's just monochromatic, black and white. I, I know I said I like the orange, so I, I guess I sort of threw y'all for a loop on that one. I did like the orange, but I needed something that matched my shirt. My shirt's more red and yellow, black and white. This will look good, this is clean, I like it. If you've learned anything today is that you cannot trust a word that comes out of my mouth. Check this out, Berlin Raceway Hall of Fame. They couldn't have picked a better spot, it's right next to the bathrooms. <laughs> we are now underneath the main front stretch grandstands. I, I think I missed some of the driver Q and A's. They had them all out on stage with Jeff, Jeff Striegel doing interviews. I think I just missed that. I think I just heard they wrapped that up. So, whoops. It's my fault for not being punctual. I'm paying the price. Making a note of this for later, the candy shack. We got ice cream as well. They have a little Berlin Raceway souvenir shack right here with a bunch of different t-shirts. Some more hats right here. They got ear protection. I can hear cars on track. I think qualifying is happening, but over here near turn four, they've got a concert stage set up. And if I spin around, they've got concessions. They have like a bar tables, chairs, umbrellas to get some shade. This is one of the most like developed areas of any short track I've been to. My gosh. <laughs> and fans are turning out to support it. Oh, check out that old school uh, Johnny Benson t-shirt. Oh, and check this out. They have a bar that overlooks turn four. What the heck? That is so cool, right up against the fence. I've never seen anything quite like that. They have a wall here behind turn four that I think lists every single super late model track champion uh, in Berlin's history. Gosh, go back to the 1989 Johnny Benson Jr. racing tonight. This is awesome, I'm glad they had us. Look, John Benson Sr. I always heard the amenities here were pretty good, but 
Uh, no, I'm honestly impressed. Let's see if I can zoom in on the uh, concession prices, just for reference, and the, the options. Honestly, not bad at all. Honestly, better than a lot of fast food restaurants these days, as far as price is concerned. Look at how curved that front straightaway. It's not even a straightaway, but look how curved the front stretch is. Wow. I wanna show you guys the back stretch as best I can. Oh. There's a fence. Oh, I was trying to sneak by past this party deck thing that I don't think I'm allowed on. Maybe they'll let me borrow their steps. But the back stretch here at Berlin is interesting. There's no wall. You can see people walking across the track, but see how curved the back stretch is? And look, yeah, there's no outside wall there. The wall ends like right over here and then picks back up way off into turn, yeah, way off into turn three where those like tire barriers kind of are. Maybe there is a way to like sneak around and get a better view, but I'm afraid of accidentally getting, getting locked out or something. Um, but yeah, so I think it is crazy. You know, ESPN now broadcasts the SRX Thursday Night Thunder is back, but as a result, their very late TV window uh, really hurts us, especially when we're technically in the Eastern time zone here. So it's a 9 p.m. start for the SRX. And you know, qualifying and all that's a random draw, so the heats don't even begin until 9 p.m. I know some short track fans are used to late start times like that. I'm not. I'm not. I think it's wild when races end at midnight or 1 a.m. I think tonight's race will hopefully be over by 11 which isn't too bad. You know, I have an early bedtime, but still. I did not expect a flyover like that for this. Oh, they're, shoot. They're coming back. Everybody get down. Yeah, but okay, that was really cool. I honestly didn't expect that. Um, that was a better flyover than most, not most maybe, but many NASCAR races. I'm excited to be back here in Berlin. It's been 20 something years since I've driven a race car out here before. They're firing a better. About midway through this uh, opening race, I was just talking to someone who's raced here. He said that this series, you know, they kind of exclusively, these cars exclusively race here at Berlin. And it's been kind of a rough season. A lot of these teams have been rebuilding their stuff in anticipation of this race this weekend because I talked to another person who's from uh, this area who comes to Berlin Raceway all the time who said this is the most packed he's ever seen it. He, he wondered if they maybe even oversold the place a little bit. Uh, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> Race just ended, it was close, uh, a near photo finish at the line, uh, but now we've got, let's see, 7.30, green flags at nine, I'm sure they'll do opening ceremonies before then. We have at least an hour or so to chill. Uh, there have been some clouds that have moved in, as you can see, I'm no longer squinting, so uh, we'll see. I'm gonna maybe go try to find some food. I should probably try to beat the rush, beat the crowd, maybe get something to drink at the very least. Was going to get right, something to eat, ran into a Carson Hosova. They were sold out of pizza, unfortunately, but I got me a hot dog, a Diet Pepsi. Gonna try and find a place to chill. Just gonna sit here along the fence to eat my hot dog. Uh, got to briefly talk to Carson. He was a little bummed he wasn't uh, gonna be racing tonight, honestly, but he's excited for Johnny Benson. I know that's a mentor of his, really helped jumpstart his career. So Johnny Benson racing tonight. Uh, but this is uh, you know, Carson's old stomping ground, so uh, I'm sure he loves seeing this place get the, the recognition it deserves, being on national TV Thursday night, Thunder ESPN. Uh, so that's pretty cool. But uh, Carson, fresh off a win at uh, Richmond last weekend in trucks, third win of the year. Hey, a lot of rumors swirling around his future. Mm. One thing I just learned talking to somebody I didn't realize is that Jeff Striegel of MRN actually lives in the area. He's here most nights of the week. I did not realize that, that's awesome. Whoa, check out the drone. It's just hovering there. Menacingly. Tide is beginning to change here. Uh, Jeff Striegel over the loudspeakers explaining that there is the possibility of weather moving in, explaining how the lightning policy is going to work. Fingers crossed that doesn't happen. Also, the main bathrooms over here, they lost water pressure, so the lines for the uh, porta potties are filling up quick, but that's okay. No worries. We were able to relieve ourselves. It was fine. But uh, hopefully, driver intros are going to start soon without any interruption. Lights just blinked on here. It's about, let's see, 8, almost 8.30. Green flag is scheduled for just past nine. Look at that crowd behind me. And that's, I guess that's, I guess that's technically the main grandstands, but it is packed. I think I've said this already in this video, but I've talked to multiple people who've said this is the largest crowd they've ever seen at Berlin Race. So yeah, I definitely said that earlier, but I want to repeat it because it is, it is packed. Someone's tossing t-shirts into the crowd. Whoa, 
That one was launched. There we go. They're doing a modified version of driver intros so that they can try to beat the weather. That's Kevin Harvick in the white hat addressing the crowd. Starting on the pole for heat race number one, he will be driving car 51 from Las Vegas, Nevada. Please welcome Kyle Busch. Driver intros just wrapped up. I'm standing here next to this pretty cool robo cam. I think this is one of the cameras that you'll see on ESPN shooting straight down the front straightaway. Well, again, it's not straight, front stretch. Moments away from firing the engines, I think the crowd is getting restless. <laughs> Just wrapped up great battle between Brad and Kyle Busch. Keselowski gets the win, but it's starting to sprinkle. And I just looked at the radar. I finally got some internet. It's not looking great, but fingers crossed something miraculous happens. Definitely sprinkling now. This camera guy looks like, yep, he's getting his, uh, his little windbreaker on. Looks like they're pulling the cars into the garage. Likely gonna need to dry the track at least a little bit at this point. Dang it, man. It doesn't seem to matter if it's NASCAR, SRX, freaking Soapbox Derby. It's getting rained out, or at least being impacted by weather these days. While we're waiting for this drizzle to hopefully pass us by, I think I've confirmed this probably is the largest crowd in Berlin Raceway history, or at least recent history, because someone told me that these grandstands, and now that I look at it, they're exactly right. These grandstands right here were wheeled in specifically for this event. These are as temporary as temporary grandstands can be. So definitely a, a, a big crowd tonight at Berlin. A lot of anticipation surrounding this event. Look at all the vehicles on track trying to keep heat in the surface. Maybe the lighting's just playing tricks with me, but look at that cloud that is coming this way. Why is it, why is it purple? Oh. Newman held on to win heat race number two. Great battle between Newman, Ken Schrader, Haley Deegan. What in the Twilight Zone episode is this? Some good news though, the bathrooms are back up and running. Oh, we are so back. Bush survives a couple of late race fun flags to hold on for the win. Man, he and Brad Keselowski were the class of the field tonight. Although Elio Castroneves, he had that one crazy restart where we went from like fifth to third, worked his way up to first, but probably used his stuff up just a little too quick. Great battle though, great race. Got a big shadow in my face. Fans are starting to file out. I'm pretty sure my rental car is back here somewhere. Did I miss it? All right, uh, I guess I'll debrief in a moment. I'm gonna try and get out of here. Traffic is pretty bad. There's people everywhere. So uh, one moment. I saw an opening, I had to take it because who knows if or when there'll be another one. <laughs> Jeez Louise, they just randomly start shooting off a bunch more fireworks like 15 minutes after the checkered flag. Scared the crap out of me. Oh, okay. After a lengthy trek out of the parking lot, we're back at the hotel here in Grand Rapids. Uh, that was awesome. That was my second SRX race, my first time at Berlin. Can I just say, every 
is it Michigander? Michigan, Michigander that I met tonight was so nice. Uh, absolutely incredible. It's always fun to meet fans from across the country, sometimes across the world even, who love racing, who have their own local tracks. But yeah, every fan I met tonight was just so enthusiastic about the SRX being here. Even some of the drivers, like when I talked to Carson Hosevar, he was excited to see Berlin you know, on the map, so to speak, on ESPN. So uh, I had a great time tonight. I thought the race, yeah, you could tell they got a talking to. And maybe the Paul Tracy suspension sort of woke everybody up because it was it was hard racing but pretty respectful racing um, great battle between Brad Keselowski Kyle Busch Haley Deegan was even up in the top five for a bit and Haley Ocash Nevis I think I said this already kind of burned his stuff up a little bit it was a great show fun to just kind of walk around take into different vantage points you probably saw in the clips I really like sitting there at the entrance to turn one watching them come off of turn four you know spread out on the front straightaway and dive into turn one it was interesting to see how like Castro Nevis was taking a very shallow entry. Keslowski maybe was trying to learn something from that. And I don't know. It was really fun. I, I, I can't recommend Berlin Raceway enough. Uh, I'll have to come back sometime. Next time I'm in Michigan, uh, I will be sure to stop by. I wish I could stay longer because I think the uh, Battle of Berlin or Battle for Berlin, whatever they call it, their big super late model race. They have a couple big races every year, but one of their big super late model races is next week on Wednesday. Uh, I think William Byron, Eric Jones, I think Chase Elliott even, uh, Josh Berry, a few others, the typical super late model crowd are all coming to Michigan for that one. But unfortunately, I can't stick around for it. Uh, anyway, thank you so much for joining me on this journey. It's a little different than most uh, at-track vlogs I do, a little more random stream of consciousness, but I hope you got a good idea of what the SRX looks like in year three and what Berlin Raceway looks like from a first-time fan's perspective. Thanks for tuning in, y'all. I'll see you in the next video. Peace out. Why did I say peace out? I don't ever say peace out. <laughs> Take it easy, y'all.